Hey everybody, it's Rob from Flail Throughs. This is Gundam Battle Operation 2, and this is a round in the newly buffed Moon Gundam. I really like the Moon Gundam. Um, it's For one thing, it's really good for AB rooms, because the Psycho Plates can shoot through everything without stunning your allies or knocking anything over, so it's a good way to uh, build up assists and get point uh, quotas for, uh, for a day, so... But I put it on in the same, like, sort of personal colors I use for my uh, uh, Gelgoog from time to time. They're just colors I felt like I, you know, in terms of favorite colors, I, I'd say blue is uh, more in my uh, range. But just, these kind of look nice. I like it, so I stuck with it. This is not the round I was talking about about a week ago that uh, one of the commenters uh, wound up uh, being in. Uh, apologies for that, but apparently uh, that one did not save, so, you know, nothing I can unfortunately do about that. But this one turned out fairly well. They made a bunch of changes. I I don't even remember. Oh, I was going to try and get the person who was coming up on the bridge, and it did not work, and I did an ally, and that's dumb. But, uh, yeah, this one came out fairly well besides that, and the exploding. But, yeah, they've given it more hit points, more defense. They've... Uh, up the damage on its uh, beam tomahawk, and they've uh, sped up the, I believe, both the butterfly edges and the uh, psycho plates. So it is pretty formidable. And yeah, uh, uh, we'll see how it goes. But I, like I said, I seem to recall this going fairly well. We didn't capture any points, so number two and I are having to uh, head out from uh, the base. So we are going to. Uh, Hopefully we'll take it slow, because there's only two of us. But I've got my beam uh, rifle charged. Uh, the Moon Gundam, besides the like prototype beam shot rifle, because this is yet another uh, test bed for the Sazabi in its original form as the Bargill. But uh, in addition to that, let's see, can I get it with Vulcans? Yes, I can. Uh, it can also use the uh, uh, Sazabi sniper rifle, which... I was expecting the Dagdal to go up there, which is why I used the uh, grenade on the ramp, but it decided to change directions wisely enough, so... And everything is kind of shooting me as I try and get through that choke point, so I'll go somewhere else. Uh, the She Gundam is definitely... Uh, definitely kind of in, uh, in my sights quite a bit this round, but, you know, it's an easy lock-on since it tends to be in the air. But trying to think what else to say about it but yeah I yeah the uh oh wow the brain but yeah I tend to prefer the shot rifle just because it does have a little bit more utility it does it isn't as long range a weapon especially uncharged as the uh Sazby's long rifle but that does tend to mean you can uh ow, I need to stop standing there and trying to launch the butterfly edges and get to some kind of safety yeah, but there's another, you know, another pot shot at the She Gundam because it's right there. But, yeah. Um, brain. Yeah, the shot rifle is more likely to stun up close, I think, since it's, you know, all the shotgun weapons do, at, at like, a rapid, a rapid amount of build stun as opposed to just straight-up instant stun. So having that shotgun for things that have protection against uh, standard stuns very, very useful. Yeah, I accidentally tagged somebody with one of my butterfly edges, but I did take out that she gun in the process. I'm going to go after the Zeta Plus C1. Uh, Zeta Plus C1s, if you let them run, can be dangerous because uh, they've got heavy staggers. I have no idea. I guess that person managed to roll at the right moment because, yeah, just did not... Uh, the Psycho Plates did not uh, connect at all. Either that or they hit some of the uh, debris before the... Uh, before the uh, pilot. Because one of the things about most weapons in the game, though physical objects like the uh, psycho plates are worse at this than, uh, than piercing beams are, for example, is if they hit an object before they hit an enemy, they, they will generally count as having been obstructed and not do damage, which can be very frustrating. But just, you know, part and parcel of the thing. Like I said, there's some there are some beams that I feel like will uh, work better. 
funnels work better than the psycho plates at all, super long ranges for uh, that that basic reason, which is that basically the attack for funnels, of course, doesn't start until the beams start firing. So, you know, if, when you're working with the rule of if the attack first hits an obstacle, it doesn't count. You know, the psycho plates are an active hitbox from the second you launch them. So. Yeah, that is that is their drawback. If they uh, decide to fly through uh, uh, something, uh, if they decide to fly through the scenery, they're not going to work. Whereas if the funnels fly through the scenery on the way to their target, that you're fine. So, again, given that the psycho plates do a lot of damage and uh, stun fairly well and pierce, that is a fair balance, I think. You know, the fact that those huge hitboxes work against you in other circumstances. But yeah, I just hit that. Uh, that Zeta plus C1 for, I think, three to four instances of 1142 damage. And, yeah, so... And also, one of the nice things about the Psycho Plates is, I believe, if I remember correctly, and boy am I dead, um, that they will nullify any attack, not just, uh, you know, not just any attack but melee, which is the case on uh, the uh, various New Gundam's uh, defense systems. The uh, Phoenix's armed armors basically work the same way, both in terms of you know being intercepted by the environment and in uh, defending against things. If I if I'm remembering right, let's see. I'm probably going to drop in where uh, three is because it looks like they are having a one-on-one -on -one fight. We can make shorter and then go over to uh, help the rest of the team if everything goes according to plan. That's the thought, anyway. Okay, Rob, what are you doing? There we go. I have no idea why that took me a second, but, I mean, generally, I don't know why I'm doing things when I'm doing them, so why should, you know, five minutes later be any different? Eh, more like a couple hours, but you get the idea. Didn't quite have the arc on the butterfly edge to, uh, uh, to hit that new gun MFF, FF, and now I'm getting shot in the back, which... Hit it with that. That's a good time for Vulcans, and they worked. And Psycho Plates also reload uh, very quickly. Another, you know... Another virtue of them. And most of those uh, counted. One or two of them did, in fact, hit the uh, uh, hit the debris, so that one didn't, but the rest did pretty well. Um, but yeah, one of the things, of course, about the C1 is when it, you have to stop to fire the uh, uh, hip guns, which is what it was doing when I uh, hit it with stuff, and I don't, or when I meleeed it, and I don't think you can cancel out of that animation into a tackle. So. Or if the, yeah, they could, they either didn't have the boost or didn't think of it. But regardless, yeah. And yeah, that uh, now that she Gundam's down, that's good. We've only got three seconds. I put my shield up so that nothing could happen to me and landed to tackle besides. So yeah, pretty good round in the Moon Gundam. I Like I said, I like this thing. It, it's a good suit. And I don't remember if this one has been in the uh, recycle ticket store yet or not, but it's worth a grab if you see it. Top score at 42.55, also top diversions because I'm bright orange. 5 and 3 and 101,000 damage. I'm pretty pleased with that. That is going to do it for today's Gundam Battle Operation 2. We will be back soon. Till next time, everybody take care and have fun. Later! Alright, so... The set of boosts on the Moon Gundam... Uh, Got three more, uh, three thousand more hit points. Went from twenty three to twenty six. Uh, three more per, uh, percent of uh, ballistic resistance. Went from twenty nine to thirty two. Ten more of beam resistance from twenty to thirty, and the same uh, three percent of uh, melee resistance that it got in ballistic. Twenty nine to thirty two. Uh, the beam tomahawks are, uh, or the beam tomahawk, its main weapon, you know, saber axe combo that only really ever operates in saber mode in the in this game uh got a small power boost from 3050 to 30 uh 150 and cooldown between swings got shortened from two and a half seconds to two uh head vulcans got an extra 25 meters of range went from 225 to 250 and the reload time went from 10 seconds to seven uh, you also regain control faster after throwing the butterfly edges so you are not as uh, vulnerable and also, uh, the Psycho Plates start attacking faster after the target lock and come back faster. So, again, just keeps, uh, you know, keeps things cycling a little bit more efficiently. 
And okay, so there's only one moon gun to mid as it costs 700. The average across all generals for a win rate at 700 is 49.6 percent. The level one, the level one moon gun was getting 46.4. So yeah, it was down a little bit. Uh, rival win, there was even a little bit more disparity. 50.4 is the average across all generals. It was 45.7. Um, damage dealt, 93,154 is the average across generals. It was doing 88,385. So yeah, I've not only beat that, but also beat the average for generals by about 7,000, 8,000 points. So I'm pretty happy for that. And in terms of MS losses, the average across generals is 2.9, and it was at 3.2. So, yeah, it is a little bit more hardy. It's got a little bit more damage and better uh, better responsiveness to all its weapons, so it is just a, a good set of all-round improvements. I, I'm, you know, like I said, I like the Moon Gundam. I'm really happy with that.